why yeah. the reason why so many people were, were here was because of Julia Black. Oh, okay, because she opened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's okay. Attract these people. Yeah. They want to see the TV. See the see the stars. That's <laughs> it. See the stars. That's it. But this is quite interesting. When I when I signed, I thought, no, I have to be here. I have to, you know, this this interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we got, we're on time. We don't do, um, one thing we don't do is um, black, black type. Right. So we don't consider ourselves as black people. Right? Um, first of all, my name is Kujo, Kujo L. I'm one of the, um, the heads of the Morris Science Temple. Okay. Um, the Morris Science Temple was founded in 1913 by a man by the name of Nobu Ali. Wars, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was reading up about the Moors. Mogul So he founded the Moor Science Temple to teach to teach our people that they're not black people. To teach them that they're not Negro, to teach them that they're not colored. And he was doing that from 1913 to 1929. And during that, during this time frame, he gathered up a million plus people in his organization. Now, the question comes in uh, is, how come we don't know about him and we know about all these other people, right? And the reason why we do not know about him is because of the message that he brought. Because in order for in order for the Europeans to have control in North America, they have to, um, to or rather for the Europeans to keep the control that they have in North America, they have to keep the people in a in a dumb certain state of mind. of mind. Certain certain mind frame. Yeah, yeah. The mind frame that our people are on today is that they're a color. The mind frame that our people are on today is that they're a continent. So they would say that they're African. But if you talk to an African, an African is going to say, I'm Congolese, I'm Ghani, I'm Eritrean, I'm Ethiopian. They would never classify themselves as black people. Um, people on the continent know that our people didn't come here on slave ship. Because the people on the continent know that those buildings that they call slave castles or whatever like that over there are actually slave ports that were owned by the African kings. It's not some European thing. It was, it was our people perpetuating this thing called slavery amongst our own. And then the European got involved with it and then they just took what was already happening and then they brought it in a, in a whole new different level than where it was, right? So we have the issue today of our people continually complaining, marching, picketing, doing all these things to try to get some rights, right? But their marching picketing never amounts to anything. Every year they're doing the same stuff, marching picketing. When you go after the Chinese guy, what do you guys do? Oh, well, you know, we see. Right? They never, you find me some Chinese people that march for picket for some yellow rights. Find me some Indians that march and picket for some red rights. Find me some Hindustani people, Indian, Sri Lankan, Pakistani people that march and picket for brown rights. You're not going to find it. And you're not, you're not going to find it because those people recognize that they have a nationality. So what Mobujuali did in 1913 to 1929 was teach so-called Negro black color people that they're not Negro black color people, that they're actually Moors. So when you say that you're black people, all you do is tie yourself slavery. That's why their marching and picketing doesn't do nothing. 
because there's slave codes in North America. And the slave codes say that if four of us say we want to pull together and talk about you know this room and whatever, clansmen, KKK, slave master, whoever could come and lynch all of us. Because in the slave code it says that slaves can't congregate because they're slaves. Not because it's racism, not because there's, there's violations of somebody doing something. It's because the actual people themselves want to classify themselves as something that they're not. And the more we classify ourselves as something that we're not, the more we continue to fall victim to these people. And it's something that, it's something that, that you know, like we're saying, you don't, you don't hear um, other nationalities talk like how we talk, right? Like when we say, we say, because we were enslaved, we want reparations, right? You get reparations yet? Okay, how come we never got reparations yet? Because we don't have a nationality. If you ask all the people who have a nationality, if they got reparations, they'll tell you. Matter of fact, you can go online and list nations that got nationalities, and they'll tell you all the different nations that got reparations. And they didn't even go through slavery, but they classify what they got as reparations. Right? So once we once we start recognizing from, from a, a common sense perspective that we, we cannot be considered or classify ourselves as black people because we're not that. This is black. Nobody doesn't look like this. And if somebody does look like this, they have a tinge of blue or purple in them, so they're still not this. And this is common sense. If we see somebody who's the complexion of that chair, they're gonna have a nationality that ties them to some type of landmass on the whole planet Earth. Again, we said, we talked about Chinese people do not classify themselves as yellow people. They don't do it. They don't even slip up and say, I'm yellow. We might do that based on our ignorance, right? Because we don't know any better because we weren't taught certain things. If we look at, um, there, there was a, I went to a, um, a Sri Lankan store, convenience store, right? And I was buying chips or something like that. Gabe went to the counter, went to the guy, said, said uh, you're gonna, um, you're going to buy this? I'm like, yeah. He's like, ready to put it in the register? I'm like, no, you can't put it in the register because I'm take this and pass this around. It's like, I'm, I'm indigenous. You can't put it in the register. Because if you put it in the register, then that means I have to pay tax. And if I'm native, I don't pay tax. It's like, what do you mean you're native? You're like a black guy. No, I'm not black. The stuff that you see on TV, they're the natives. Those people aren't the natives. Like, we're the natives. So then I, I, I told him that, are you Indian? It's like, yeah. I'm like, are you Indian or are you Hindustani? like, I'm Hindustani. I'm like, how come, so how can you switch? He's like, oh, because Hindustani is the actual name of India. Hindustani is, act, is the actual name of the people from India. The guy gave me the chips for free. Because he said, I recognize what you're talking about. Because I know that you're the actual, I just have to, to make sure that you weren't trying to, you know. So the whole world knows that so-called Black people are the actual native people. And the people who the news pushes as the natives, those people are late. They're Chinese, mixed with European, mixed with us, mixed with anybody else who came here. And you can just look at their features and know that they're from China. Can you tell us how to see Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> right? So, um, the purpose of today is to um, present some information 
so that our people could be ins inspired to consider um, their status, right? Consider that we've been playing ourselves. If anybody listen to hip hop, there's a, there's a, a hip hop artist called Jeru the Damager, and he had a song called You Playing Yourself, right? That's what we've been doing. We've been playing ourselves and then blaming somebody else when we're the ones that are actually at fault, right? Um, so yeah, so the issue um, that we're, we're gonna be dealing with is this um, carding thing, right? Um, there's, there's, been, there's been a lot of emotionalism about it from our people. If anybody, when it first came out, when before the, before the, the new police chief, um, they had some conference or whatever, something that was on the news and all that, and they had a room full of people. And one of the panelists or whatever asked the crowd, you know, how many people got racially profiled? Stand up. And then only so-called black people stood up. But there was Chinese people there. There was Hindus there. There was Pakistanis there. There was Europeans there. But the only people that stood up were the people who were classified as black people. Which means that this is something that's directly only affecting us. This is not something across the board that everybody has an issue with police coming in their community and violating people's rights. This only happens to our people. But, you know, if we're the only ones that call ourselves a color, when, you know, if we go back to kindergarten or whatever, black's not even a color, it's a shade. So you can't even say that you're black people as when you're a color. And it's, oh yeah, I'm black. You can't even say that because black's classified as a shade, not a color, right? So this issue of police carding, um, we were doing this workshop to see why is it that it only affects us and nobody else. Nobody else has, has a problem with police. Right? Even um, if you remember a few years ago, the Chinese store owner, the, the store got robbed and then the guy took off and then the Chinese guy chased the guy, kicked the guy's ass or whatever, and then it was cool. It wasn't even an issue. They told him he had a right to do that because that's his property that this guy stole. Let that have been some Negro store owner. He would have been the one on the ground or whatever arrested for violating somebody or whatever like that. Because that's just how it goes when you're dealing with people that are considered or classified as stateless, which is what our people are classified as, stateless people. And if you're stateless people, then that means rights do not apply to you. So what do the civil rights do for black people? Just European? Okay, let's, um, let's have something. Okay, let's just. I'm going to ask you because it seems like before that, you were sort of classified as property in some way, right? Right. I guess. And, and civil rights continue that on, but just bureaucratically. They continue to bureaucratically, so like integrating or something. Right. Like so, so if we look at it like, um, um, we were supposed to okay, 1865, right, um, is when they said free the slaves or whatever like that, right. Also, there was something called Freedman's Bureau. That the freed slaves were supposed to go to the Freedman's Bureau. And when they go to the Freedman's Bureau, that's how they got their 40 acres and a mule and get their name back and get their culture back, their language back, or whatever. But then they assassinated Abraham Lincoln, right? Stole all the money from the Freedman's Bureau and pretty much just pretended like, you know, slavery's over. So go out and, you know, be free slaves. But, opportunity. Yeah, but if you're uh, if you're a free slave, you're still a slave. Mm -hmm. Your status didn't change. You're just not on the plantation. So now they have all these people running around that have no status. So they have to find a way to get these individuals to kind of toe the line of citizenship without really making slaves citizens. Because you know a slave can't be a citizen. A slave is a slave. 
you can be an indentured servant, right? Which isn't slavery, that's you get a job at a house and you know, you're the servant. Or you're a slave, which means you have no status. So the civil rights, um, in 18, it's 1865 as well. The Civil Rights Act was um, unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. They put out a ruling that the Civil Rights Act is unconstitutional. That was 1800. But you still have Sharpton and Farrakhan and all these people still convincing our people that there's such a thing as civil rights that applies to them. Which, which is unconstitutional since the 1800s. So now what does that say to the world when somebody say, well, I have civil rights, you have to respect them, when the world knows that that's been unconstitutional since the 1800s? How stupid do these people look? And if these people look that stupid, should they be respected by anybody on the planet? Should they be respected? If the Civil, if the civil Rights Act that all these so-called black leaders are using to pull our people into, you know, unity and you know, um, you know, segregation of the school. We should have our own stuff and all that stuff. If that's unconstitutional, then these people are obviously incompetent because their leaders know. All the black leaders know what I'm talking about. Right? They know about more. Like for for example, Farrakhan has one of those cards that I passed around. So, so if they know that, why, why are they teaching people? Because they work for the slave master. You ever heard? So they want to keep him in, slave. in slavery. In slavery, you heard of the term overseer? Yeah. All right. That's what those people are, overseer. Their job is to make sure they whip their brothers and sisters into submission so they listen to anything that this European says. I think it's gone a step further because they put a face that looks familiar to them. So that you don't see it as being yeah. something as right? Being, right? As against because you know if it was a European, you'd be asking questions. Right. But because you see someone who looks like you, and sort of talks like you, you then think, okay, yeah, well trust. he must be on our side. He must yeah, be on yeah, our side. Right? Trust, trust, but those right. people got checks. If you see, um, if you remember the um, the Malcolm X movie that Spike Lee did, right? Uh, the Malcolm X movie that Spike Lee did. Um, there was a part when. Um, um, they were, at, they were at Malcolm's house, and one of the brothers came in, and he had under his arm a yellow envelope, or he was holding a yellow envelope. That was the payoff signal. That was when they were trying to tell Malcolm, take the money. Even Betty was trying to tell him, take the money. And he's like, no, I, I'm, I have too much integrity for that, to sell out my people for some papers. I'm not gonna do that, right? And then this is how they trumped up the whole thing with you know him going against Elijah Muhammad and blah, blah, blah. when the reality is, he found out all this stuff. That's why he changed his tone and he started talking about you know human rights and he stopped, he stopped talking about, about um, black people and white people and just go, just go check the speeches. But people don't talk about that stuff, right? Yes. Like, so the Civil Rights Movement did something and then it was voted to be unconstitutional? No, no this, this, the, the, the actions of the Civil Rights Movement was after it was voted unconstitutional, which is why they never got anything for exercising civil rights. This is why people got kicked off buses too, which is why people had to okay. drink from black fountains and all that stuff. Right. That's what civil rights was supposed to stop all that. So then they say, no, you're still a slave. You're still a slave, so you drink from the black fountain. And you go through the black door. But then again, at the same time, during the same time, keep in mind um, Django movie. Everybody was mad about it. Right? Everybody's mad about this movie. But they're letting people know. Django corrected his status. He wasn't a slave anymore, right? Matter of fact, he was free by a European. Gave the guns to all the other guys, told them kill slave master and all that. Told them that if you guys are competent and you know about, you know, astrological powers or whatever like that, that's the North Star. Now we have to ask ourselves, if these people are 
slaves, violated, lost their history, lost their culture, lost their language, so they're supposed to be dumbed down, not know anything. Why is this European telling them about a North Star? And what's the significance of him telling them, there's a North Star if you want to, you know, get out of slavery, you know, you can either take this gun, blow this guy's head off or whatever like that and free yourself, or lift the horse off him, bandages, like take him to the hospital and be a good, good nigger. And, and, you know, obviously they thought otherwise, you know, grew up. So then you have the scene of um, going to the slave master's house, right? Going to the slave master's house and the slave master who was Don Johnson telling them what why you guys have the nigger on the horse on my plantation because what's that gonna do that's gonna make all these other Negroes realize now hold on a second how come this guy looks like us but we're out here in the field or whatever you know something even and that whole scene was like was like the wake-up call for the slaves because he even came took the whip beat the slave master and all that he did all that stuff rode the horse through the stuff, you know what I mean? And all the slaves were just like, oh, this, this guy must be, you know what I mean? And then he was wearing this blue, right? Which represented, you know, blue blood, which is Mars. And then in the end, he had on the burgundy. Then he had the top hat, which is this with a brim on it. So he was telling, telling the people that they're Mars, telling that, telling on that the KKK are just bagheads. I mean, they, they're not no real organization, fraternal or whatever like that. They're just some Europeans who, you know, weren't really down with <laughs> what's going on. They were just, you know, they were the real renegades or whatever, right? So the whole issue is that our people have been told numerous times, Martin, the Black Knight movie, called him a Moor throughout the whole movie. He's even like, I don't even like this more thing. You guys call me a more, I'm from, I'm from Harlem and all this type of stuff, right? Over our people's head. Um, uh, Will Smith, Wild Wild West, before the guy kicked him out the, the, the friggin' um, whatever spaceship or whatever stuff that he had or whatever, call him Black and White, right? So it's known, but the, the population, they're not listening for themselves. They're listening what somebody else says. Because like what the brother was saying, well, you know, he looks like us, so I'm gonna listen to him. But not knowing that that guy's overseer selling them out. So, so when we say, so when, when we say um, we're the Aboriginal and indigenous people of the Americas, we don't have to drink from a black fountain because there's a river right there. You wanna drink, you go to the river, Dip your cup, bowl, bucket, whatever like that. You have water forever. So being a more entitles you to like this land. Like, do you, do you have property rights, or do you even want them? Well, it's 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 not necessarily being a more, but understanding what that is. Not really being that, but recognizing that we. We've set ourselves up to be in this position that we're in right now, where we have been so dumbed down that society now is fed up. And their job, from in their eyes, is you know get rid of Negroes because they're a problem, they're an issue. They they don't have they don't have a nationality, right? Um, They've been here longer than whoever else that's foreigner here. And the foreign people have more stuff than the people who's been here. Right? You have all these um you have all these different communities that they have their own town, they have their own festival, whatever, every year. Well what we have is caravan. And then that's it. And then that's supposed to encompass all of us. But then, you know, if you see uh rally for some Indian, Sri Lankan, whatever, all of them have one flag. They're not playing with 50, different flags saying that they're a nation, right? Um, the Sri Lankans or the Punjabis, they, get, they walk on the street with their dagger. 
They're not getting no charges or nothing like that. How come they're not getting charges? That's a weapon. That they're walking in the public street. But well, they're not getting charged. They got their turban, which is their, which is their national headdress that nobody tells them to take that off. All right? But you find some Rastafarians or whatever, they'll challenge those people, take off your stuff. All right? Because they know that you're not really, you're not who you say that you are. You're, you're from. Because there's no such thing as a nation of Rastafarian. Haile Selassie was Ethiopian. How come you guys are Ethiopian? And then why don't you go back there? What are you doing there? If you're from Africa, what are you doing there? You should go back to where you come from if you say that you're from somewhere. Somebody should have gave you some type of reparations or something like that to go back to where you come from. But that's not happening. Why? Because these people have no nationality. They're stateless. And the world is sitting there waiting for Negro black colored people to get back into the constitutional fold, they call it. The constitutional fold is being recognized as a nation. Right now, we're not recognized as a nation. Well, I mean, not I we. say I am Canadian. Yeah, they say I am Canadian. Canada is a private corporation. It's not a country. To say you're from the United States, that's a private corporation. Just like McDonald's, Esso, whatever. Right? So when when our people take the emotional response, you know, somebody does something, oh that's racism. Already already they know we got it. We got these people. We're gonna run, let make them run the treadmill forever. How long this racial profiling thing going on? Since I was in school, they were talking about racial profiling of black people. I'm 40. I graduated in 95. They're from right down the street, Mark Garner. And back then, they were talking about racial profiling. That's still going on today. They didn't solve anything. Police didn't stop. Matter of fact, you check the records, the numbers getting higher, racial profiling or whatever. Obviously, something's up. And it's not them, because they could easily just stop bothering people who look like us, right? Because like we're saying, you know, um, contact cards are intended to allow police to focus on bad guys. Right? Why, why is it our people? Because when you look up black in the dictionary, just like Malcolm did in the movie, you realize black is everything negative. That's not racism, that's what it is. If we say, you know, instead of clear, you need black water, Bet you're not going to drink it. Black market, black meal, but our people have this emotional attachment to this word when it's not an identity. It can't be an identity because it's an adjective. And if you're going to be identified, you should be identified by a noun. That's common sense. That's kindergarten. But we're going to call ourselves black and we're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old talking about we're adjectives? And you really think people are going to respect that position? But, but the thing is, people, people don't know. And if you don't have the knowledge, how are you going to, how are you going to go right. to and, anything, and, make and, any change? And that's what I'm saying, that our people have been conditioned to listen to people. But the people that they're listening to are overseers that work with the slave master, whose job is to sell us out. So where do we find the people that we need to listen to? That's why we're here. That's why we had this, this workshop. Because yeah, it's all good to have natural hair and wear dashikis and know our culture, but if you don't know what your nationality is, all that stuff is just poppy show to the world. You're just, you're just you know, puppet. You're not really who you say you are. Because half of these people, matter of fact, we even tally the room. How many people in their culture, through talking to your grandmother, mother, father, grandfather, cousins, uncles, whatever, found out that you have some type of connection to Africa? How many people found out that they have a tie to native people? How many people 
are descended from one of the Caribbean islands in here. Who's from the Caribbean in here? Is, what, does the Caribbean have anything to do with Africa? What's that? What does it have to do with Africa? Is, is, the, is the Caribbean closer to America or Africa? Right? So, for example, right? For example, right? Our family is from Trinidad and Tobago, right? There was people that we knew from Trinidad that would swim to Venezuela. Swim there. Not a boat. <laughs> swim there. So obviously, they have nothing to do with going the other way. They're more tied to this side than tied to over there. Even though, you know, we know that we're tied to over there. We know that our ancestry is over there. We know that, that our culture doesn't just start on this side. But we also know that the only reason that we're tied to over there because here and over there we're at one landmass at one time. And that's the only way that we're tied to over there. Other than that, I think one of the things too that what I realized too, we have to say, it's like a root that doesn't have any trees can't grow. Part of the issue is, and I think you know this, they burnt a lot of books. It was a period of time where they burnt books for hundreds of years. And so that was done to disconnect us. So that's part of the problem. And when we finally do open up, we don't have any reference points. So we have no proof. They produce things and then you open them and they say stuff in them. A lot of that, that stuff, what makes that true? You know what I mean? So that's what they've done. They reconstructed, like my brother said, they reconstructed history. So that, and then they took overseers, and then when you went to places to get spiritual help, everything was co-opted. So you're done from the beginning. When you go to look for spiritual help, they're lying to you. When you go to the books, they're lying to you. Right? So that's part of the process, too, that we're talking about. That, that, and that's what the real battle is. But they've done an incredible job. And why we're here is because we're starting to wake up. This is something on a cellular level. That's why we're here. Yeah. We, know, we know something's wrong, right? Yeah. We all know something's wrong. Yeah. It's in the matrix. We know something's wrong. We just, and, and again, like, this is, we just don't know what it is. Right. Right. And this, this is something expected. Like we, we didn't expect to have the you know Judy Black room. Right? We didn't expect to have people in the back standing up and then people rushing in here for because this is about selling. This is about people who are vibrating on a certain frequency that realize, hold on, something's wrong out there. And then they, they see this, and automatically stuff's going off in their head like, oh, what's that? Why is he wearing that thing? Police starting affecting black people. Why is it only affect black people? And you start, wheels start turning. You start doing what you haven't done in majority of us, our lifetime, think. <laughs> They, they stopped us from thinking and having other people think for us. And then they, and the other thing they did is they distracted us by giving us so-called jobs. Right? So for the most part, you come home from work, you barely have enough time to do anything. So you realize that when school ended however many years ago, how many of us go home and study anything? And that's what I've been trying to find out. I'm in, on a slave ship, so I'm working. I work 15 hours a day. I can barely come home to do anything. But I now try to take some DVDs and a portable DVD player if I'm in the, in the truck. And I'm trying to try learn. To. At, at the time, the what they've done is they've taken the time away. That was the, that's what they've been doing. And that's why you notice the same dollar today is worth less next year. They keep doing that. Your wage isn't going up the same way that they're taking the, the money away from you. So that by the end of it, by the time you finally get time, you're too old. Right? Finally, when you get time to relax at 56, you're too old to do it. And when you're young, they get you caught up. That's what I realized too. When you have all that energy, you're up there looking for something for else, right? Other looking, stuff. Because you've got that, that stuff running through you, the testosterone and all that stuff. You're looking for women or men at that time, right? At that time. And then they get you into a job. And then you're done. Right? They, get, it, all that stuff was planned, right? Have a yeah. family. You're done. Systematic. Systematic. All that stuff. And that's what you have to start looking at. All of this stuff. You start looking and, at And the then we straight away from, from the things that were natural to us. Like it takes a village to raise a child. Right. That you not, you're not finding, like, you're not finding a uh, uh, household amongst our people that everybody is there. You go look at everybody else. Even on the bus, you're going to see a grandmother, 
taking the grandchildren to school or whatever like that, you know what I mean? You're not seeing that with our people. The last thing too, they took the family away. What they did, the last thing they did was destroy the, 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 the female. I used to have my grandmother around. That's not happening anymore, right? Mom's out of the house now. Right? That was the last step they did, was finally destroy that last connection, the feminine connection. Because right? I remember when I was there, it was my mom, but then my mom was busy, but my grandma, grandma was, was always there. Grandma was always there. Grandma was no longer there anymore. That was the last step that they did in the right. last generation. And then, and then, you know, going back to the job thing, they have they have her not working past 65 or whatever. Right. And then the last thing now, and then we left. <laughs> and the last thing, when you started to go for some spiritual help, you go to these churches, which is all the co-ops. <laughs> right? Which, which is, you know, for, for example, you have, you know, like, we're, we're joking about it today, that, you know, we were here, we came here maybe about 11 o'clock or whatever, you know, 12, you know, 1, and then we say, that's why it's not that busy. Everybody's in church still. And you know what's funny? As we start to look up, I said to my brother Amari, I said, look, it's, he says, it's true. I said, it's 1.30, the whole place. It's 1.30, get... now the place starts getting, where were these people for the past two hours or whatever? In the colonizer, brainwashing. The last thing I realized, too, he wouldn't just sit small small ways out of the taxi, but he'd go to the church, he was passing that basket around. And I was thinking, well, it's just the last little bit. If God was really here, the devil would have been taken care of. How come God was in church every week looking to sort of take care of this problem that we can't get rid of. If there's an all-powerful being, things should be equalized. And when I start to realize there isn't an all-powerful being, we are that being. And we're not we're not activating. We're not activating. It's a proof of your allegiance to the church. Right. You're able to pay on a weekly basis. Weekly basis. Weekly. Ten percent or whatever. Ten percent. And and people don't even think about giving their ten percent. They just uh, then when you realize, when you look at the taxes that they take off, they're about 10% too. Yeah. So when you start adding that up, they take 10% off on your check, and then when you go to the store, they take 10%. So that's really 20%. When you're at the church for another 10, that's 30%. How much money do you really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Any um, questions or comments? So this is um, just some questions. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, um, what I'm, what, what I'm saying about what I'm hearing is that all the things that we face, you know, all the things that, that we see, this is all an illusion. This 100%. Is all an illusion. That's why they put out the Matrix movie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was written by a sister. That was, that, that was yeah, written by a sister. They did was they that. And they we were just talking about this this morning. That movie, when we see it, if we've all seen it, Morpheus, who was the answer, is really that, that connection. Really, really right. right. More Morpheus. Morpheus. They're telling you, and that's the thing too, with the movies, they're telling you all of this stuff, right? But if you don't have ears, and that's how they're releasing their karmic test. Like giving you the information, but if you're not on that frequency, yeah. you're not seeing it. Yeah. So then the answer is to what we're talking about. They put Keanu Reeves there. And when he was telling me, I didn't know this, but I realized that story was about us. So I said, why didn't they put a brother in there? And he said, originally, Will Smith was supposed to do it. Was yeah. originally, but they didn't do that because that would have connected us. So then they put Keanu in there, and we realized we broke that down. They put Keanu in there to connect it with, so, so the European could connect to that on, on, on the surface. On the surface, yeah. because and Keanu Reeves is Hawaiian, yeah. right? And and disconnect, yeah. and disconnect yeah. us from it. Disconnect us from it because we're looking at something that that we know on the surface. We're not identified. We don't identify with it, so it must be for them. But then when you see that scene when they go to Zion, it's all us. That scene where they're in the party scene and they, they filter down and everyone you yeah, yeah, all yeah, the ones yeah. that are uh, who are escaped. Yeah. It's all us that they see dancing and doing all that stuff. They're telling you that. Right. When do we dance and do all that stuff? When when do we? Yeah, when we celebrate and right. power. Our the, the, re the reality for us yeah. is that yeah. the reality for us is that, you know, it's 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 that dancing time is over. Yeah, yeah. Everyone dancing because you know um, we we won whatever or we we finally made to the whatever. You know our our dancing is making sure the young people don't go through what we do. That's our dancing. Our dancing is passing on to the younger generation so they don't have to suffer. Like we have um, there's a sister. Uh, that I know in Cincinnati, and 
somebody, somebody was on the phone with her son. And her son was telling the person on the phone that, no, I'm not black anymore. He's five or whatever. So he already has it in his mind that attaching black to myself as an identity is something that I, I'm not supposed to do. You know what I mean? And he was kind of coerced to say that he's black. And, and his mom got mad at him. And then that's why he, you know, let his higher self or his God self come out and just say, I'm more, I'm not black. You don't call me black or whatever. Because it's something that's known to him. But at this big, just like Chinese knows that he's not yellow at this big. So when he gets to adult, he already knows that, you know, anytime somebody try to play games or whatever like that, you know, playing games with me. Because I already know what's up. You know? Just like um um they they have um a a systematic um way of getting our people to to what they call acquiesce or default. Mm -hmm. Right? They get us to give up without, at the point of giving up yet. We are still in it just because, you know, oh, well, we think that we're in a compromised position or, you know, they have more guns than us and they have armies and whatever like that. We can't fight them. All we can do is march picket. There ain't, there ain't nothing about armies or nothing like that. I don't do with that. Anymore. Yeah, all right. Right? This has to do with us recognizing that we've dropped the ball. And we have to take responsibility for what we've done. We have to accept the fact that, okay, you know what? We're the reason why people say racism. We're the reason why we have multicultural societies and all this type of stuff. Because everybody's trying to keep us up. That's why stuff's multicultural. Because they know that Negro, black, colored people, they can't be trusted or whatever like that. Because they don't even know that they're not adjectives. They don't even know that they're not adjectives. They're going around calling themselves adjectives to the world and expect to be respected when that's kindergarten stuff. Kindergarten? You add all talking talking over black people and blacks adjective, and then you add these same people, sellout leaders, going to court and doing all this stuff, capitalize B and capitalize N and Negro to make it legitimate as an identity. That's not real. Just go, just go check a dictionary. It'll tell you that it's an adjective. And we play this game that, you know, we're the gods of the universe and people have to respect, you know, nobody respecting anything. Clearly, they don't respect black people's position in the world, clearly. So the change is gonna come when we start knowing for ourselves, right? Instead of having people tell us, dictate to us or whatever like that, we tell them, hold on a second, I, mean, I hear what you're saying, but let me just go check and verify what you're saying before I just jump in that line where I see down there people getting beheaded. Just because, you know, that's the black line. So we just get in line because question some things, right? So. We'll put some questions out there um, just to inspire, once again, um, thinking and recognizing where our faults have been, right? Um, so one, who and what is black America? Oh yeah, and um, all these stuff that we're reading from, um, they're downstairs at our table. You can pick these up if you haven't got them. Um, who and what is Black America or Black Canada? What is the nationality of a Black American or Black Canadian? Are people identified by colors? What is the national flag of Black Canadians? What constitution secures and protects the, in the inalienable rights of Black Canadians? What is the what is the divine title of the Black government? What is the descent names? of their forefathers? What land is associated with those descent names? What is the free national name and religion they claim? Now, Noble Juali put out um, a lot of information with regard to us recognizing um, how we're tied to this, what they call vast estate called North America. When 
we look at when we look at America, right? We have AME and RICA. AME comes from Amexum, which is the true and divine name of Africa. So instead of saying Africa, we say this, Amexum. Now we're talking about the continents being together at once, at one time, right? What some people call Pangea. When the continent was together, this is where this is coming from. This is not coming from the perspective that there's an Atlantic Ocean. This is coming from the perspective that it's all one landmass. <coughs> then you see RICA. Right? So America. Now, Amexum and Africa making up the name America, but America being on this side means that Africa had to be considered this side at one time. Not just over there. So how do we know that is when you go and you look at all these um, these Freemason conspiracy, everybody got this? That's where it's taking notes. Um, the Freemason conspiracy movies, National Treasure, Tom Hanks, Da Vinci Code, all these movies, um, um, Indiana Jones, Last Crusade, and all this type of stuff. They're talking about over here. But over here, they're finding all this Egyptian stuff over here. Why are they finding Egyptian things in America? If America and Africa weren't one place at one time. They were, and, and, and when we when we say Africans were traveling, the traveling is based on there not being an Atlantic Ocean. So we so so our concept has to be that if we're saying Africans and Americans and traveling and going back and forth from one landmass to there's no Atlantic Ocean. Even though we did travel when there was an Atlantic Ocean. Right, we did travel, we did have boats and stuff like that. We are the founders of navigation. So, yes, we did. But we're going before even that, that point. Which, which, again, if you classify yourself as black, you're not even getting to, to that part. Because they stop you off, they stop you at 1492. When you talk black history, they stop you here. Because prior to 1492, for 700 plus years, there was more history that the black scholars don't talk about. And if they do talk about, they talk about it from the perspective of the Moors, like you're not that. But when they say African, they say, oh yeah, we're the Africans, and we're the this, and we're the Egyptians, and we're the, but when it comes to Moors, oh, you're not that. Moors are, you know, some other people that did something. When that's your direct bloodline as, as dark-skinned people. Because when we do again the researching for ourselves, you're gonna look up a word in the dictionary. Black Amor. Right? And then in the dictionary, it explains to you that black is an adjective plus more, which is a noun. So, which one of these are you? Based on the dictionary definition, now I say it or whatever, but based on the dictionary definition, are you this or are you that? That's open to now more now, right? Because mm -hmm. because place our thing. right. So and the reason why we're doing that is you saying it is different than being told. So feel the 
difference. Say I'm this. Right. And then say I'm this. And there's a difference in the frequency of just just that only. A total difference. Right? The security guy who's downstairs. Security guy said, Hey, can I ask you a question? Um, are you guys part of a religion or something like that? No, why do you say that? No, because I see that you wear fezes. This is a European. We didn't tell him nothing about fezes or nothing like that. He came to me. He pulled me and said, Yo, let me talk to you. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, are you guys part of something? It's just my national headwear. It's just what I wear. Oh, because I noticed that the Shriners wear that. Shriners are Freemasons or whatever. So did, did, are, did, did, did the Shriners teach you guys? No, we taught the Shriners. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, well, I'd like to know more or whatever, you know, so I gave him, you know, a handout or whatever like that. So he's like, um, he's like, um, we're talking about the whole thing with the, you know, black and whatever. I'm like, so what, what do you classify yourself as? Not white. This is the guy downstairs at the door. <laughs> How come you don't call yourself white? Because I have a culture or whatever. I know, you know, I have a history. So you think why people call themselves black people? I don't know why they do that. You know, you can't be. That doesn't tie to anything. Like, if you say that you're black, what, what, is, where does that, what does that tie you to? It doesn't tie you to anything. I'm like, here's, you know, here's some more flyers. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you could convince our people they're not here. Because we've been trying to do that and they're not here in us or whatever. Right? Any um, other questions? Anybody? Well, you're going to do all as well. Because remember, we're talking about um, these police racial profiling, whatever. You're going to go get yourself a police manual of arrest, seizures, and interrogation. Anyway, get it at any bookstore so you know what their job is and know who they are. But if you let them tell you, they'll have you think that, you know, that they have some authority to arrest people and take people's names and whatever else that they do when they don't. Right? The police manual of arrest, seizure, and interrogation. So we're going to go to They take out the minimum because when I apply, I put down, you're taking out the minimum. Mm -hmm. You're not going to take out the, you know, whatever, 50000 a year, the equivalent of that. No, you're going to take out the, the minimum that you guys say we could put that number instead of the full whatever, right? So that way, um, at the end of the year, I owe, so they come to me and say, well, you owe whatever. So they're going to send a letter saying you owe, and then I'm going to send them back a letter prove to me that I owe, you know, because who are you? You know what I mean? You say that you're CRA. From my history, CRA came about because of, or taxes came about in Canada because of war. Right. So if there's no war going on, then there should be no taxes. Secondly, you're not a government. When they say, that's why they always use acronyms. Right? That's why they always say CRA. We say, Canada Racketeering Agency. <laughs> That's what we say. They can say whatever, they have revenue or whatever they want to make. Hey, you know what? They're entitled to their opinion. But opinion is no proof of truth. So they can have opinion, you know, just like they say, um, um, Uh, 
they say CSA. All right? But child services is on, their main office is on Isabella Street. We know from a historical perspective that um, children's services and these people, they mainly attack our people. How is it, why do they mainly attack our people? Because our people are the ones that are stateless, nobody else is stateless. So they don't really have jurisdiction over anybody else to kick the door and take the children because, you know, the neighbor called and says somebody's getting beat next door. Or I, I looked through the door when they opened the door and I saw a ruler on the ground and they're using that to beat the child because I heard the child crying yesterday, so you guys need to come and deal with this. Isabella is one of the so-called queens of Europe. She connected with a king by the name of Ferdinand and in 1492 these two people came together to kick the Moors out of Spain. That's why these people's head office is on Isabella Street. Because all these streets over here, they, they, could, they could pick any street to put their head office on. And they picked the street tied to the, the banishment of the Moors as their head office street. I don't think that that's coincidental that they did that. Because these people know the history. These people know the history. They know that indigenous people can't be taxed. That's why when I send them their letters or whatever back saying, you know what I mean, you guys can't, whatever, they never send me nothing. They never, next year, they're not sending me something saying, well, the past five years you didn't pay, so we're adding up all the five year stuff to this year, and then now you owe everything back from then to now. They don't do that. Because they, they already know that they don't have any authority. But they figure, hey, better, better we leave him alone and just go bother people who don't know about their rights over there. But the thing is that they know, they know, but we don't know. They know. Exactly. Exactly. So it's just like when when you go and the guy has the cards and picture or whatever. If you know that that game's rigged or whatever, you're not playing. But hey, whoever doesn't know, <laughs> he's calling them to the table. We're trying not to be called to the table. We're putting them in a position where don't call on us. Don't don't try to give me no card or whatever, because you know I'm I'm gonna tell them, you know, here's my stuff, right? I'm not I'm not part of the Canada stuff that you guys are I'm not part of the corporation. I'm outside of the corporation. Even though I live here, go to the store like everybody else, buy stuff, whatever like that. I'm not connected like how you guys want me to be connected. So racial profiling doesn't apply to me. I don't get racially profiled. It doesn't happen because I don't see those people because they don't want to see me. But they already know that if they come to me or whatever, it's not gonna be the, the regular whatever. I want your badge number. Oh yeah, these are some things that you could, you know, start asking for these people. Make sure you ask for their badge number. Make sure you ask for their bond number. Make sure you ask for their superintendent. Captain. Whoever. Anybody else that you could think of. Right? Before anything happens. And if they don't provide these things, more than likely, that person's a criminal. More than likely they're a criminal. So they say on page 105 in their little manual or whatever, unreasonable search and seizure. Section 8 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Section 8, right? And then why do they, why they have this in Section 8? Right, because 8 is infinity. 
It means this is perpetual. This is not something that they're ever, 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 ever going to change. It's always going to be this. Section 8 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees, guarantee, not sometimes or whatever, guarantees this. Everyone has the right to be secure against unreasonable search and seizure. Everyone has that right. This section was not included in the Canadian Bill of Rights of 1960 and was probably taken from the Fourth Amendment of the American Constitution. American Constitution. They put that because they know that U.S. is not America. U.S. United States or Union States is a private corporation and they don't have a constitution. That's why both Canada, both Canada and US push democracy. And our perspective is democracy as the rule of the people and whatever like that, people with laws, applying to the people, just this and that, when from the soldier's training manual, you write this down so you can Google it. Soldier's training manual, TM2000, United States War Department, right? Not America War Department, right? United States War Department, because there's a difference. They know the difference, but they're hoping that the people don't know. And then once the people don't know, then they can take advantage of them. Democracy, a government of the masses, authority derived through mass meeting or any other form of direct expression, results in mobocracy. Attitude toward property is communistic, negating property rights. Attitude toward law is that the will of the majority shall regulate whether it be based upon deliberation or governed by passion, prejudice, and impulse without restraint or regard to consequences, results in demagogism, license, agitation, discontent, and anarchy. That's what democracy is. So when you see that they have, um, you go to all these government buildings and they have Charter of Rights and Freedom on the wall, and then you're reading it and it says, yeah, the democratic government Canada and all that stuff, this is what they're going on. And again, it comes back to that thing that when you look at all the other nations, they have a nationality. When they say, I don't want to be, or not I don't want to be, when they say, um, I'm going from India to Canada, and they come over here and get citizenship and all that, they have the opportunity to go back to India if they want. They can go back home if they don't like what's going on here. Our people, we're stuck here. We ain't nowhere that we can go back to. Because if we could go back to somewhere, it would be to those places where they took us from slavery. And it wouldn't be us going back there. It would be those people over there saying, you guys took those people from our nation and we're sending boats, put them on the boat and send them back. That's what would really happen if we came from over there. But those people aren't doing that. So clearly, we're not from there. And then if you go find some Africans or whatever you ask them, if they're sincere, they'll tell you, yeah, no, you guys are African. They'll tell you. Openly, they'll tell you. Right? This is why, even though we claim that we're slaves and we came over here, right? We're slaves and we came over here. Because we're slaves and came over here, that means if we commit a crime, we should be deported to where we came from. Because we're slaves from Africa, so you know, we should be deported. They don't deport because we're not from anywhere else, we're from here. That's why jails are full of only us over here. Because we cannot be deported, because we didn't come from anywhere. This is where we're grounded. This is where our roots are rooted. 
Yes, we have ancestry that's in the continent. But remember, conceptually, we're not talking about there's an Atlantic Ocean if we're saying we're African. If we're saying we're African people, then there's no Atlantic Ocean. We can just walk to Africa, and then we walk to America. When they talk about um, different queens, kings, whatever, then they got the caravan, and then the caravan's going with all the camels and all that stuff. You think they're crossing water with all that? Camels and all that? Not crossing the water with that. They're on land. That's why they have camels. And camel could camel go forever. No water needed, no nothing. Camel will go forever. Camel will walk from here to wherever land is, they'll just walk. So we cannot be deported. Verify it again in another book that you're gonna look into called King Alfred Plan. And it's, it's called Executive Order 11490. This executive order was authorized October 1969 to counteract the minority. Blacks, Indians, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites. The minority, quote unquote minority. Um, executive order, executive order 11490. King Alfred plan. King Alfred plan. And then you can just do your research on that individual named King Alfred to see what uh, what his position was with the Moors historically. All these words, blacks, Indians, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites do not include a de jure national name. All these words are descriptive shadow brands coined by Europeans as substitute pedigree names. All people bearing these labels are referred to as it. All people bearing these labels are referred to as it. Not as them and he and she, as it. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the streets a superior of people with a desperate and dangerous will. So you know the, all the Black Lives Matter and people throwing stuff and all that, right? The desperate and dangerous will that these people have to be free, right? He will be a formidable enemy for he is bound to the continent by heritage. Talk about over here. And knows that political asylum will not be available to him in any other countries. Because we didn't come from nowhere else but here. Nowhere else but here that we come from. So as soon as we start saying that we're from somewhere else, then we classify ourselves as quote unquote property or shadow, which is why when you do your research on the census of Canada, you'll find out that the Department of Agriculture is the one who issues the census. Why is the Department of Agriculture dealing with the census? Oh, because the people are property. Specifically, shadow property. Oh yeah, agriculture, cattle, right? Mm. Everybody who claims they're Canadian citizen falls under the jurisdiction of the Department of Agriculture, which means your property. Well, maybe uh, you could mention what year that doctrine was written, King Alfred Plan. King Alfred Plan, 1969. So just during the same time, all the slaves, uh, you know, black power and you know what I mean? People with guns walking on the street and stuff like that. You talk about respecting rights of people or whatever. Black Panthers. Right? Okay. One more thing to put on the record before we open up for questions, but we got well, 15 minutes left. Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. So this is the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics that you can verify on a website
IACP, International, International Association of Chiefs of Police. So this guy out there that they have as their black chief of police, now stuff's going to be good because we have a black guy now. He knows all this stuff, what we're talking about. But he's not talking like how we talk. So obviously there is a compromise. Law enforcement code of ethics. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve mankind, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation. Sounds like them, right? <laughs> and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all men to liberty, equality, and justice. Not respect the civil rights, respect the constitutional rights. I will keep my private life unsullied as an example to all. Maintain courageous claim in the face of danger, scorn, or ridicule. Develop self-restraint. You know they don't got self-restraint if they're just carding anybody, right? So which means that they're violating this. And constantly be mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and deed, in both my personal and official life, I will be exemplary in obeying the laws of the land, which is the Constitution, and the regulations of my department. Whatever I see or hear of a confidential nature or that is confided to me in my official capacity will be kept ever secret unless revelation is necessary in the performance of my duty. I will never act officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudices, animosities, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously and appropriately without fear or favor, malice or ill will, never employing unnecessary force or violence, <laughs> and never accepting gratuities. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith. Oh, so that means that the people control them. They don't, they're not on their own. It's the people that make police who they are. And if the people think that they're passive, oh yeah, that guy, he's supposed to serve and protect, so I'm just going to let him do whatever he's supposed to do, then you're going to get violated because you're supposed to give them orders. Not police chief, people are supposed to give them orders. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust to be held as long as I am true to the ethics of the police service. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself before God to my chosen profession in law enforcement. Not policing, law enforcement. So their job is to enforce law. But then if highway traffic is an act, and then criminal is a code and constitution is an act, then that means that's not law. Because acts, statutes, ordinances, whatever, are not law. Those are things created by corporations to make people think that they're governmental. And then people fall for it. Sworn or affirmed and signed. So they signed to this. So law enforcement code of ethics, you can just Google it online, it'll come up, print it out, have it in your pocket all the time. So when these people try card you, you can point to their stuff and let them know that you know you got rights. Questions before we close out. basis of, um, of etymology. Etymology and parts of speech and things like that. Right? So they can be clear who's who and what's what. So if they if they know that as a foundation, then they would they would know that they're not black. And then from there then you have to go, okay well 
what are you if you're not black? And then from there, then you go into the history of these individuals or people classified as Mars. And again, once you get Once you go to etymology, they got dictionaries for that. And then that's so you know the origin of words. So when somebody says black, you know what they mean. When someone says um, nice, you know what they mean. Because, you know, etymology, nice means foolish. Etymology, black means pale. Are we black people? If we go by etymology, well, no, we're not. But then that means that if we're not black people, then who's the black people? The Europeans are really the black people. It's not a negative, it's just black means pale, black means bleach. And they've traded this game, they've played this game with us. So that's why they had Dan Aykroyd, who was pale, and then Eddie Murphy make the movie called Trading Places. Because they're playing people. And they use movies to do that. And there, was, there, was, there, was even, there was even a written doctrine as to when the switch happened. It's documented. It's, 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 doc, it's, go, it's documented in government issued text. So when the switch happened, when they started to use the term and switch places, it's documented. You can also do, um, with regard to the switch, you can also do your research on um, the Wigglemore Party. W-H-I-G-G-M-O-R-E. You know, conveniently, more is in there too, but you know, we'll leave that alone. The Wigglemore party, where they did the switch of starting to classify themselves as white, because white goes back to status as well. So everybody who comes from different nations, they will be classified as white when they come over here on their passport, even though they look like us. Because it's a status, it's not complexion, just like black status, not complexion, you know. Alright. Um, the other thing too that you want to look into, you can look into getting yourself law dictionaries. Right? Um, you want to get Black's Law Dictionary or Law Dictionaries from fourth edition and earlier. Because when you start getting into fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelfth edition. They're, they're more watered down than, and you wouldn't be able to find things in there. Like for example, in this dictionary, they have the definition of free white people, which talks about, you know, Africans are free white people, you know, um, Asians are free white people, they list all these nations, and then they say, um, the Caucasian, European, or whatever, are not white, don't classify them as that. In the diction law dictionary, so obviously, uh, you know, they know. If they're gonna put that in print. Where can you get that? Um, you can get a, You can go online. If you um check the um table downstairs, one of the brothers down there, he usually goes. He buys a few of them off like eBay or whatever like that, and then we sell them on Amazon. You can get them from Amazon, eBay. Just just look up Black's Law Dictionary you or Law Dictionary. Get it before. Sorry, what edition? Um, fourth, fourth and earlier. Right. We still got about seven minutes. Any other um questions? Everybody's clear. So, yeah, it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot, but you know that's why you know we have classes, we have online classes. Um, once again, if you when you go downstairs, you get the flyer for our online class. Um, Twenty-five thirty-three A Eglinton Avenue West. Right? Moorish Science Temple of America. And our duty is to get this type of information to our people so they can, um, first of all, start studying, because I know you were, you were asking about um, the card and all that. What we want is have our people's mindset correct first before you go getting any type of papers, cards, or whatever like that. You want to make sure that your mind's correct. Once your mind's correct, then your heart's gonna be pure and you're gonna exercise this the proper way. Because there's people whose minds aren't correct, then they get this and then they use this as, you know, like retirement stuff, telling people 3,500 for cards, 
$1,000 for papers, $4,000 buy a deed for some property over there or whatever like that, and people pay because, you know, our people are ignorant, they're competent or whatever. Yes, bro. Do you have any um, CMA documentation downstairs? Uh, we have, um, we, we might have a, a couple books. Um, if we don't, if we, we don't have anything, we can go to RV Bay Publications. Dot com, and you can be stuck there. Let your mind get blown there for a few months. <laughs> and RV? you'll clear. Yeah, RV Bay B E Y Publications. And again, you know, due to the time constraint, you know, we, we had to sort of limit where we go, but we're still here. We're downstairs. You want to build? There's other more downstairs that. You can do it. But I'm sure you know they can impart some some knowledge to you. Um, we want to thank everybody for being here. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Yes, sister. Is that, that manual you said the police manual? Yeah. Did you say you can get that? Um, just any bookstore. They got. They have this. This is yeah. This is just stuff that's out there. That, you know, our people want magazines and stuff, but we need to start building our libraries back. You know, getting books. Also, with regard to. Um, books on our history or, or law dictionaries, things like that. You can try the thrift stores. You know, you might get them for five cents and stuff like that. Um, or um, estate sales. You know, usually usually the, the more high-end people, when they have their estate sales, they'll be selling all types of stuff. They have figurines of yourself. That they did have $10,000 carpet with Queen of Sheba on it. But they're gonna say that you know these people are racist towards black people. But they got a statue of King Tutankhamun. Obviously, they're not racist. Obviously, they honor us. But the question is, do we honor ourselves? If I can, yeah. yes, sir. So historically, with the face of racism, when you see those those albions with those little figurines, and you identify that as racist, and they'll argue with you. I'm not racist. It's only because you don't know who you are. You're labeling them as something. And they're trying to tell you they're not. You don't even believe them. Because they know the truth. The truth is passed down to them through their family lineage. Their father taught them. Their grandfather taught them. They know. It just you argue by saying, well, I'm black and I have rights and I'm black and I'm this. But all of the public uh, literature that, that brother has, it's all public information. You just have to know to do the work. You know, these, these bookstores that sell books, they sell all books. Anything that's been published and copyrighted is in those stores. You just have to look for it. Right, but then when we when we go to our people's stores, <laughs> there's nothing there. Right, they're keeping you on black and all that stuff. You go to European, they have a wide range of history or whatever like that. You know what I mean? Which includes us, because if you go to Asia, we're there. You go to Hindustan or whatever, we're there. If you, we're everywhere, but we're not everywhere as black. So black is a modern term for slaves, and it's only in America. And, and one more point, there's a brother that we know from Germany, and we have some classes on YouTube. Actually, you can do that too. YouTube search, um, Canaan Land Wars, YouTube search Canaan Land Wars, and you know, we're students of this, so everything that's here, we have here in, you know, video form or whatever like that. And then if you look up on um, German Moors, M-O-H-R-S, because that's what they call us in Germany, M-O-H-R-S, Moors, they don't call us black, right? There's a brother that we know from Germany who came in here, and he brought all this information pictures, whatever, letting us know that we are more, we're not black people. And as soon as we call ourselves black people, we get disrespected everywhere else. So thank you very much, appreciate your time. And um, enjoy the rest of the show. More and more I am being guided to study more. More and more I am being guided to study more.
See my Moorish flag flying like my Moorish cape I'm not a Jew, but Jerusalem has a Moorish gate Dirty Moors on real, call them Moorish fakes Pull out Negroes emotions, like some Moorish drapes If you really wanna know, go to a Moorish meeting You better have a pen and pad, cause when active Moors speaking It's wake up time, you won't find a Moorish sleeping Crescent moon and star in the sky, that's a Moorish beacon The way I navigate beats, call me Moorish seaman My nationality, I have the power, Moorish he-man Moorish turban, I'm royal, don't mistake me for bourbon Moorish master MC surgeon, not a rapping servant We suburban, more than so determined To solve the negro problem, Moorish white man's burden More beans conquer, white rice, that's a Moorish plate Black or more fish on a hook, that's a Moorish bait Moorish estate before chapter 48 ancestral line All secrets taken away, Moors are not clandestine Euro masons go to back rooms or washrooms Returning black robes and hoods with cloaks Moorish costume, you won't have it twisted once the Moorish got you Desensitize the facts so the truth won't shock you Some people call it awesome, I'm making it awful Liar lawyer pushing the legal when Moors are lawful Creatures give you ghost spell, she bring Moorish gospel Moors are ancient, they even found a fez on a fossil Even Bruce Lee knew he wore shirts with onks Even MC Hammer knew pantaloons are Moorish pants I understand man, I am a man, I'm a man, I understand that nationality is the order of the game. I understand.